Hi everyone, I am Teresa Ann on Let's Talk with Teresa Ann. Um, yesterday I did a live video and some things took place that I was not expecting and one of them was um, just a, a time of having a heart to heart with God and it just so happened it got captured on the live. Thank you Holy Spirit for just, I want your heart in this. I. I want your love to be revealed. Um, even teach me, Lord, as, as I talk. The thing I'm learning about being a witness is that we are actually the very vessels that when you say yes to Jesus, that you get to be a witness of Jesus working in and through your own life. And to get that revelation has been really awesome. But also with that, with all the things that are going on right now in the world, um, there's a part of, I don't know if it's, I don't know if you have gone through this, but I know for me, there's a part where you just kind of want to run and you want to act like it's just not there and it'll go away. And you know, the Lord loves us so much that he will show us character flaws. And for a long time, I would say, well, this is just who I am. This is just who I am. So if you don't like it, then, you know, I'll give you the birdie in my head. <laughs> and the Lord has just been so loving and showed me, number one, that is always a notification when I think that way, that I'm not operating in his love, number one. But also, when I say that this is just who I am, really... It's, it's not the image of God, it's the image of my life experiences and what I've allowed life to mold me into. But it's not the true image that God created. So when I say, well, this is just who I am, I, I'm actually um, receiving a lesser than life. So it's not about being a better version of Teresa. It's literally being one that emulates who I say I belong to. Um, so I wanted to say that part. But secondly, um, we are seeing the evidence of a world that needs God. Um, there's just no other way to put it. And I think sometimes even for me, when I say we just need God, I almost see it like I'm saying it as a cliche. Um, but when I get down to the nitty gritty of who God really is, it, it does move me to my knees. Like, wow. You know, even creation itself gives evidence to the power of God. Even creation is is bragging on God, is tattling on God, is pointing to God. And yesterday when I was starting my video, I literally thought I was going to start a video with an orange in my hand um, saying, okay, when I squeeze this orange, what comes out? orange juice. If I have a lemon in my hand, what comes out? Lemon juice. If I placed garlic in a garlic press, would a banana come out? Of course not. So why is it when I get pressed in life, Jesus isn't being seen? That was the whole, uh, that was just going to be my message yesterday on the video and then I was just going to finish it. And I didn't even go there. It was almost like that was a preface for my heart with the Lord to say, if you say you believe who you say I am, then why is it when you get squeezed, I'm not being seen in your life? And as soon as that was spoken, this, um, the truth of that broke off the lies in my life. And literally, you could see it. People that witnessed it, um, most people that witnessed it were like, oh my gosh, whoa, that was crazy. Um, 
and it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. So one of the things I'm learning about God is that when you get with the heart of God, when you go in and want to know him for who he is, this is what happens. When you get to find out his heart, his heart reveals how your heart needs to change. It's literally that the holy heart of God comes in because we're getting to find out who he is. And by default, we are able to see the unholy things within our heart because we are finding out he's truth. So it's, it's kind of like, um, I think it's the treasury department. There is an actual group of people who study the true authentic currency so that when the counterfeit comes, they can see it immediately. So they don't study a counterfeit bill. They study the authentic. And I'm sure most of you have heard of that analogy. But the same goes with God's truth. When you find out who he is and you find out his heart, his heart begins to reveal conviction is where, like my friend's son says, I love this. He says, conviction is simply an invitation to come to the Father. It is not condemning. So I want to lay that groundwork to say this, that some people have asked me, so where do you, like, are you for black people? Are you not for black people? And I'm like, I don't know where that came from. I am for all people. Um, because when God and I had a heart to heart, he, he showed me this is not a time to choose anything but me. And in every season we choose him. And as we choose him, okay, he knows every single part of every single person within every single group. And so for us to get in this playground game, that is a game and it's an agenda that is not, it's, it, it's an agenda that is exploiting black people. It is exploiting human, the human race as a whole. That's what this agenda is doing. So if I don't highlight that part, then we're not going to get it. We're not going to understand that this is not a fight against flesh and blood. This is truly a fight like it's always been and nothing has changed. I don't know why we get surprised by this. I know. Why don't we get surprised by this? Paul, thousands of years ago, said, you're not fighting against flesh and blood. People, I need you to know this. You are fighting against the spiritual darkness. You know, I used to say it's the elites and it's this. The elites are listening to the father of lies. So they're being influenced. They're being used. And once they're used up, they will, ju they will be just as destroyed as anybody else. And so for, for me to stand here or sit here and, and hear the heart of the Father and His heart for all, for everyone, for me to at all for one second get off course and start listening to the crowd and start listening to the mob, that's dangerous because here's what happened. There, there's a principle here. Um, what happened when, uh, during Palm Sunday, they all were doing what? Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And the mob was praising Jesus. And then the day he was crucified, the same mob was yelling, crucify him, crucify him. That was not the mob's chant. That was the enemy and they were echoing the chant. What are we echoing? Are we echoing the heart of God? Because I will say this and you guys might laugh. There's this page is torn out of my Bible. 
And I looked at it and I go, oh, no wonder. <laughs> because Teresa um, wouldn't really want to listen to this one because this, this, she has to die to self. But the dying to self we think is a really bad thing. But if you really look at the overall picture, dying to self means you get to come alive in Christ. Isn't that so cool? Like what? You get to come alive in Christ. That's the end. That's the end uh, product there. It's not the death. It's the resurrection part that we should be focusing on. But for some reason, because of lack, we think of the cost. Did Jesus say to count the cost? Absolutely. But I believe he said it in a way of this is an investment. So make sure when you invest in this that you understand the return is so great. So that's the abundant side. That's the heavenly wit side as my book says. So then I thought, okay, these, this is the time where the church gets to capitalize on this moment because people are scared. People are scared. They don't, I just got a text from someone who literally said, I, I had text him, just checked up on him. And they were like, I'm okay. I'm just a little disillusioned by everything that's going on. This is the opportunity for the beautiful gospel of peace to be presented. Yes, is there an enemy? Absolutely. And is there an agenda? Yes, there is. But we also need to be spreading the kingdom agenda. And that is the God of love. That we are getting to be ministers of reconciliation in this time. That this moment in time is a triage for us to be able to be right there to turn the battlefield into a mission field. That is what God is wanting to do. And he's just like grabbing onto my heart and just saying, Teresa, do you see this for what it really is? It's the son, it's creation crying out for the sons and daughters to finally come and say, we're here. It's the, when you see, when you see everything that's going on around us, that is the groaning of creation crying out for God. Again, there is a spiritual battle here. Was Jesus attacked? Yes, he was all the time, but he was the wittiest of them all. He used every single battle as a moment to turn it into a mission of the Father's heart. We are here to do the Father's business. Jesus did not die for us for us. He came to do the will of the Father and we benefited from that. Jesus came to do the will of the Father and the will of the Father was so that all would be saved. And all means there's no one excluded from that. No one is excluded from all. That's the gospel. We cannot get away from the gospel for a movement of any sort. You, as believers, you better be for black people. Because if you aren't, there's a heart issue. And if we're not for any other people group, that's a heart issue. And if we're not for praying for our leadership, that's a heart issue. And if we are not here for praying for our law enforcement, that's a heart issue. All of this is a heart issue. There is no ands, ifs, buts, ors. It is God's agenda. What did he say to do? What did he say to do? That's who we answer to. That's the lane we stay in. We do not listen there is a seducing spirit that is 
is literally seduced me three days ago. I posted all my stuff to make sure that everybody knew who I was for. But the most important one who God, the one I need to be for because he's for me, I, I don't think there is any evidence of that. And so I want to make sure that I'm very clear that, you know, as we're all going through this life, we're processing. And so when people are wanting to have a conversation, we may not, we're not going to see eye to eye, but listen, they are precious enough to hear and to listen to. Um, I think it's wrong though. Like if we have a conversation with someone and then we go tell other people that we have the conversation, but we slant it to where it's like, oh my God, I can't believe that, you know, she said this and she said that. No, that's just not godly. That is so ugly. It's if you have an issue, go to them. And if you're not willing to go to them, then the issue must not be that big of a deal. Um, so, and it's not hiding behind a screen to do it either. It's doing it whether it's FaceTime or in person or on the phone. A lot of times, um, because of perspective, um, we can't help where people's perspectives are. So even if we're writing from a place of love, if that person is reading your con your text or whatever out of a place of hate or bitterness, they're not going to see anything but, but what they see. So you can't, you can't move people. You can't manipulate them to want, to want them to see how you want them to see. It's literally, you have to say, God, I, I ask you that you would open all of our eyes to see properly because where I think I'm right, I could be absolutely wrong. And we have to be willing to have those conversations we have to be willing to have those conversations if we're not. But the conversation has to go to God first. We respond to him first before we do anything. We respond to him before you post anything. We respond to him before we get behind an agenda. We go to him first. And I'm learning that every single day. I am learning this. But going back to this page that's ripped out of my Bible that I um, kiddingly said I could see why. Because this is the basis of the gospel. It's Luke 6. And it's one that I would rather not operate in sometimes. But this is how Jesus and God is revealed. He said, you're a city set on a hill. Why? For all to see. So there's a purpose. People are watching how we're responding and how we're not responding. And so today I, I saw an image. And the image was an elephant and a mouse. And the elephant was the majority. And the mouse was the mon minority. But the elephant was deathly afraid of the mouse. And for some reason, people are being intimidated to not speak out. And to not use their platforms to speak truth because they're scared. Now listen, if you're going to use your platform to be mean and to, you know, that's just not right. Okay, but that's your platform and you're going to use it how you want. But as believers, like yesterday, I took my video down because when I replayed it, there was some parts of it that were not out of love. Um, and... I was a, I was literally like looking down and judging celebrities. <sighs> well, who's going to get that message? Right? So Jesus is our is our model. Not just our model, that's who we get to become. So when you get to know the word, you and I can know the word front and back. We could have read it 50 million times, but if we don't become the word, it means nothing to the world. It means nothing to the world. This isn't about getting knowledge of the word. It's getting knowledge of Jesus Christ so that we can become the word made flesh. That's why we have the word. Because the word of God 
is as a two sharp, precisely cuts like a two edged sword, meaning it's, it's sharp on both sides. And when it cuts, it literally shows you truth from the lies. So when you read the word, and you're like, Oh, I didn't want to hear that right now. It's because the word of God was literally just showing you, okay, here's the lie. And how do you know it was a lie? Cause you just read truth because you just read truth. So I'm going to go to this, the gospel message, the very message of the cross, the violent love, the radical love of God. Thank you so much for joining me on Heavenly Wit Monday. Now, this is a call to action. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, will you please do so now? And if you liked the content on my YouTube episode today, will you please share it with your friends and family? Thank you so, so much. And also, if you haven't yet written a review on the books that I mentioned today, simply go to amazon.com and write a review after you read my book. Thank you so much and have a great day.